are open. All desire. And the most important are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and we worthily magnify your holy name through Christ. Amen. Now, if I can ask uh, maybe Kat to phone Mike because he's trying to call me right now. What? To phone whom? <clears throat> Mike. Okay, right. let us say Kat. our collect together. Purify our conscience. Conscience, Almighty God, by, by your daily visitation. That your, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find, may find in us a man. Prepared, prepared for himself and lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, God now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Now this, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, you can. Is the love candle. We come together in the midst of a busy season to take a breath, to breathe in together the life that God gives us, to listen to the beat of God's heart and the blessings and lessons season brings to us. Each week of Advent, we light the Advent wreath. With its light comes our prayers and our stories. The candle of this fourth week of Advent is called the candle of love. Today, the name of this candle reminds us of the love that came to this world when Jesus was born and of his presence with us. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. That'll make the digital background go funny. <laughs> Let us listen for a moment to the love that Jesus has given us this week. When have you shared in the gift of love this week? When have you known God's love come into your life or life around you in the big things or in the small? Let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. that you want to bring love and relationship into every life. We thank you, thank you for the love you have brought to us. We bring to you now prayers of love for the people and places on our hearts this morning, trusting your powerful name. Amen. And now our reading. Our first reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel in the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings, writings is known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever, amen. Hear what the spirit is saying to the people of God. Our psalm this morning Our psalm this morning is the song of Mary. Um, and I know it's a little awkward, but let's read this together because it is truly beautiful and meaningful words. And we begin with uh, Luke 1, 46 to 55. And it begins, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. 
He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favorite one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord of God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of Christ. Now, before I begin, I, I, I welcome you to um, maybe put back your bulletin and just sit back and listen to the, to the words, if you would like. May the words from my lips and the meditations of all our hearts and desires be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Yes. Preparing for this morning's gathering, I began to consider what we have been hearing about over the Advent time. All about the angels. The angels in Advent. And what stood out for me, aside from Irene's beautiful short shirt today, were two things. The angels and the term, you are the favored one. Before asking Jesus's mother to be Mary, if she wishes to bear the Lord Jesus Christ in her womb, Gabriel sees a woman who comes forth like the dawn, as beautiful as the moon, as resplendent as the sun, as awe-inspiring as bannered troops. And that, that was written in the Song of Songs. Mary reflects God perfectly. And the angel affirms it. Wow, awesome, hail, favored one, that is said in Luke. As Gabriel receives Mary's wholehearted yes, the yes that gave us all the birth of Jesus Christ, he knows that this young woman is on track to become the queen of angels. Gabriel and all the angels are in the service of your salvation, wrote Origen a third century teacher of the church. In one of his writings, Origen imagines them in heaven, embracing this role at the moment of Jesus's birth. They say among themselves, if he, was, if he has put on mortal flesh, how can we remain doing nothing? Come angels, 
let us all descend from heaven. I thought, what an awesome sentence that is. Let us all descend from heaven. Ah, but to dream. Now I have a question for you today. And it's a serious one. Do you believe in angels? An angel, in, a, in the actual definition of the word, is a benevolent celestial being that acts as an intermediary between heaven and earth. And funny, Westerners don't actually think of angels too much. Actually, you hear it more in, in the East, and you'll see a lot of angels. In the Bible, angels are known variously as messengers and watchers or supervisors of God. They're known as military hosts, sons of the mighty, sons of God and chariots. Now, what do you think about angels? Do you imagine them as those sweet chubby little cherubs with the wings that fly overhead? And where do you find these angels anyway? Well, we read about them, obviously in the Bible and in other books. Angels are in a lot of songs and in art. And there's stories that are filled with angels. You see figurines and the like. And the singers, think about like Abba singing, I believe in angels. I have a dream, a song to sing, to help me cope with anything. Sarah McLaughlin sings the arms of an angel. She sings, you're in the arms of an angel. May you find some comfort there. And Bobby Vinton, or as we know as Bobby V, sings, you are my special angel. And he sings, you are my special angel sent from up above. The Lord smiled down on me and sent an angel to love. So we know a lot about angels, don't we? Now to be God's favored one, you hear that sentence, God's favored one. It sounds kind of exclusive, doesn't it? I consider that God did not have any favored ones because we're all God's children, aren't we? Just think of the Advent readings that we have had. The angels have an important role to play in Joseph and Mary's life. Consequently, in Jesus's life as well. And it begins, we know that Mary and Joseph are betrayed to be married. And in the Jewish law of marriage, there are three steps. The two families agree to the marriage. There's a public announcement or the betrothal. And there's no living together, of course. And then the third part is the marriage and the living together and consummating the marriage or making consumme, as my dad would say. When a couple is betrothed, <laughs> the union can only be broken by divorce or by death. If a woman becomes divorced, she is most likely to be stoned to death. Somehow, the couple discovered that Mary was with child. She was pregnant. As they were betrothed, Jesus realizes he's not the father. What is he supposed to do now? He's got pregnant Mary there. Should he quietly divorce her? Now here's where those angels come in. One tells Joseph in a dream, Mary is chosen to become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. He <laughs> tells Joseph he is also chosen to be a father. Now about Jesus, the angel says to Joseph, you shall call him Jesus. And the word Jesus means God is with us. In later scripture, the angel Gabriel expressed to them, you are a favored one, as well as nothing will be impossible with God. So both li literally and figuratively, Mary has given birth to creation, God in the flesh, the humanity of the divine. And what a concept that is, God in the flesh and the humanity of the divine. And it was heard Jesus and God as one being. That's where we have the triune God in our Anglican faith, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God and the three in one. Jesus is now a tangible being right here on earth. Jesus is God's way of helping humans to understand God's words and deeds. So actually Jesus equals God in human form. It was Gabriel who told Mary she will become pregnant with the Son of God. It was an angel that told Jesus to go against everything he believed in, his culture, his credibility, and his safety. He could have been stoned himself. It was an angel speaking God's word that said to Joseph, marry her, which is an out of the world thought at that time to marry a pregnant woman. If he had not, I wonder if history would have played out the same way. Now Christmas truly had already arrived before Jesus's birth. How so? When Jesus is born, we have the man who will teach him, raise him, care for him. This is Jesus, or I'm sorry, Joseph, show him how to be a carpenter, take him to the synagogue, teach him his Bible, teach him his lessons, and be a good role model. He will be a good dad, and Mary will be a good mom, and they will be raised well. So truly, it's already Christmas. When I began this homily, I wondered what I thought about the angels and the fact that Mary and Joseph were called favored ones. For me, the angels are not just those commercialized figures with the halos and wings. Angels are of one of God's links. Angels are messengers from God to the people. And favored one, that term favored one, it now seems obvious to me. We're God's children. We are favored by him. As well, God says to us, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. The use of son is universal for the phrase God's child, who we all are. This advent, we await the coming of Christ. However, should we tell our family and friends and relatives as God's children, God's favored and precious ones, we already have Christmas around us here today. Let us now receive the blessing of angels with open hearts. Let's remember that Gabriel and the Christmas angels are present at every church service, every Zoom service and all around singing the Gloria alongside us and helping us to worship God with everything we've got. And let's call on them to help us as we go forth to love and serve the Lord, to be one another's Advent angels all years long. Amen. And now let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now our prayers of the people. We offer our prayers of concern for our world, ourselves, and all those we love. In response to my words, come, Lord Jesus, please, you are invited to respond by saying, be among us. And so we pray. 
Lord, may this Christmas season be for us and for those around us a season of healing. May it be a season of hope and of love and of joy. May it be a time of true sharing and of rejoicing in all the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, be among us. We pray, O oh God, for those in need around us, for those who need a second birth, for those who need a tender touch and a healing word. Bless, we pray, those we are bringing to you this day. In our own parish, we offer prayers for Sean, Mike, Lucy, Pam, Erica, Carol, and Shirley. And for those that we hold near, Angie, Hugh and family, Kyle, Joanna and Joanne, Heather, Isabel, Cameron and Nicola, Elaine, Karen, Jean, Sean, Gail, Eric, Jim, Enid, Diane and Bunty. In the silence of our hearts, we offer our own concerns known only to the living God. Come, Lord Jesus, be among, be among us. us. We pray too, O oh God, for the children of our world and all those of tender faith, all those who have no home to call their own, all those who are hungry and thirsty. Bless, we pray, the innocent of the earth and all those who trust in you. Bless the humble and the powerless, Give hope to the captives and the oppressed. Lord, give grace to your people in their time of need. Guide us to give aid as we are able. Come, Lord Jesus. Be among, be us. among us. We give our thanks for all key workers during this pandemic, for all medical staff and hospital workers who go to work knowing the risks they face for medical researchers searching a way to prevent and to cure, for social workers protecting the vulnerable, for care workers providing contact and support to those who have no other help, for teachers worrying about their charges, for farmers, deliveries, and shop workers keeping our glorious company country provisioned for cleaners, fighting the spread of infection for all who contribute to the well being of your world. Protect each, grant wisdom and the strength in, to persevere, to remain faithful to you and your creation. Come, Lord Jesus. Be among us. Yeah. And together, let us pray, loving God. As we approach the day of Christ's birth, help us to throw wide the doors of our hearts in preparation. Help us to sense the importance of what happened so long ago when Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel. To remember the words of the angels and the prophets and the teachers of old and to celebrate all the promises that you made through them. Help us to take firm hold of the meaning of all these things and to know the depths of our being. And even now you are seeking to work in us and through us to fulfill the promises you have made. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus, that we may know your presence in our lives. Amen. And now it's a, a time to consider our, our last week and and times that to, we're rushing around for Christmas and and closing up or not closing up and how we've treated others and how others have treated us. And it is a time we lift this up to, to God and to ask for forgiveness for anything that we may have been amiss on. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. 
God welcomes sinners and invites us to this holy table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. And let us pray together. Most merciful God, we confess we that, we that we've sinned, sinned against you thought in thought, word, word and deed, by what, by we, what we have done, by what and by what we have left undone. We have not we have loved you as our own. We, we have not loved our neighbors, loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we that we may love in your will, walk in your, walk in your ways, to the glory, the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All stand. Woo. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. you. Peace. peace. Peace, everybody. Mm. Peace, Lindsay, even though we can't see you. Can't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Oh, and then there's Gandhi. Yes. <laughs> Now this I, was, I um, bought when I was in Jerusalem. I don't know if you can see it. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely. The goblet gets lost in your background. Oh. There we go. There it is. Almost, there you go. Woo. <laughs> it's the angels lurking about. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, and also with you. With you. Lift up your hearts in adoration. We lift them unto God. God. Let us give thanks to the living God. It is right to give, to give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. We rest in you, timeless one, giver of peace, bringer of hope. You have knit us together and breathed your life into us. Your spirit moves, beckoning us to join your song. You wait to speak, even though we are slow to listen. You call us in still, small voices. Command us to be still and to know you. In the depths of our being, beyond the veil of time. Still us now, so that ever more aware of our connection with you and with all who seek you in faith, we may find and repeat the praises that ring from the rocks of earth to the saints in light, as we say. Holy, 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 glory, God of power and might. Heaven and, heaven earth, and earth, earth are full of your glory. Holy Hosanna Lord. in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is, the is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We bring to this table, God of grace, all the concerns that we carry, all of the gifts we have to offer, all of the hope we long to see fulfilled. So that as bread and wine are transformed, we may experience your presence and our restless hearts rest in you. Speak to us as Christ spoke to those first disciples. When gathered at the table, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and shared it saying, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now where I've lost my spot, here I am. Do this in remembrance of me. Come Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts. Open us to receive Christ afresh in the depths of our hearts, transform us. So we may be moved to adore the ones whose mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. We worship you, we adore you. We seek you, we await you. 
Amen. Alleluia. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As, as we forgive the people trespass against us, and lead us, and lead us not into temptation, yeah. deliver us from evil. For thine, for thine is the kingdom, power, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We, with all your saints and sinners, break bread with our Lord, our brother, Jesus Christ. We strive to be saintly. We pray for our misgivings. We await your coming to join uh, to guide us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. Now I ask if you do have the bread and wine in front of you, it is now a time to receive this. And let us say this prayer together. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome, we you welcome your presence in us. And, and together we are in your love for you. With our hearts, with our hearts and minds, minds, our souls, and our strength. With the with saints, the saints we worship you. The with the angels, we adore you. With your, with your whole church, we proclaim you. your reign. Come to us, Come to oh, us so many. And make, and make us one in you. Amen. Let us pray together. Faithful God, God we, thank you, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call to turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Let us stand for the doxology. <laughs> Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you this day during this Advent time. May God keep you in good favor as you strive to be godly in manner to wait in patience and earnest for his coming again and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you Amen. always. Also. And let us go forward in, let me see if I can do this, hope, peace, love, joy, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs>